about the science behind weight gain and age. Why do we gain weight when we age? Why does it seem to be harder and harder to lose it and keep it off? Yeah. And I've got sports um, scientist and obesity expert here, Rudy, my friend Rudy. Um, Moyer, I'm going to mess up your name. Moyer. Moyer. Yeah. Moyer. I said Moyer. Moyer. That's good. That's <laughs> he good. Is my, earlier today, I had my Australian friend on. Yeah. He is my British friend. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got all kinds of accents today on my uh, Facebook Live. So thanks for joining us. We have a lot to discuss tonight. Yeah. I have been on my own search, as Rudy knows, to figure out what happens when we're 45, 50, as we age, why it gets so much darn harder. Yeah. And I've asked so many people, but until I met Rudy, um, he seemed to clarify a lot of stuff <laughs> for me. So I thought, this is just too good of information yeah. to keep to myself, so I'm going to start sharing. So, Rudy, could tell tell my Facebook friends a little bit about your yeah. you and your background and how you even got into this. Sure. So, yeah. Hey, everyone. Mm -hmm. So, I'm uh, I worked as a researcher and I have a master's degree in exercise and nutrition science. Uh, during the research, I did a lot of research on metabolism, hormones, fat mm -hmm. gain, weight loss, that sort of thing. And then since then, I've worked with hundreds of thousands of people, um, lots of people, forty, fifty plus that. Um, you know, they just have a harder time, really. To, mm -hmm. You know, they're doing the same things as someone else that's maybe younger, and the results just aren't the same. So then we have to really dive into more advanced mm -hmm. methods and look at really what's going on within the body to see what we can fix and optimize. So, ladies, did you hear what he just said? He just said, you didn't actually say it, but you kind of said it. He kind of said it might not be your fault. Yeah. That there's some stuff going on. It might not be your fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so we are, my ears perked up. So I wanted to know. So we were just discussing earlier that there's really three main things that seem to, to happen. And, and I told him we can only share these three things if we had some, some solutions for you tonight. Yeah. So we, we brought it. He, he gave me like 15 <laughs> things. But these are the three that I thought. These are, these are the mm, winners. Yeah, okay, the so what are they? What was the first one? Yeah, so the first one briefly mm. is it's called metabolic adaptations. And it basically is as you age, your metabolism and all your hormones change. Um, and as your metabolism adapts, it, it just basically makes everything harder. So by understanding, A, that this is an issue, we can then counter it with more advanced methods, which we're going to get onto in mm -hmm. a bit. Okay. So metabolic adaptation we're yeah. going to talk about. And then hormones, yeah. the big H word, hormones. Yeah. That's the big topic. So again, kind of integrated with your uh, metabolism, there's several key hormones, so estrogen, um, SHBG, thyroid, uh, t even testosterone, even for a female. There's lots of different hormones that, again, will change as we age, and they affect lots of key parts of fat loss or body composition. So uh, just briefly, like how you metabolize your carbohydrates. So maybe you can't eat as many carbohydrates as you once could or as someone that's 20 years old. And again, that's integrated to insulin sensitivity, your hormones, and how when you eat, say, a carbohydrate-based meal, how you store body fat. Okay, yeah. okay. Are they going to have to grab a notepad? Uh, we have a lot of information coming. Well, we can follow up this with like a, a PDF guide of everything I say, so you oh, can download good. this after and okay. make it easier. Okay, awesome. And then we're going to talk about calorie bank balance. This is yeah. something he I had not heard before. Uh, so, yeah, something I try and explain to people just to put it into context, really, that say, um, you know, you've got a budget per day or a budget per week, for example. I like how you say um, budget. Yeah, because <laughs> calories are a budget, right? Just like I'm making fun of your accent. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> just like money is. But if you're, if you're, say, your budget is less, you've got to be, just like with money, you've got to be more careful how you spend it, right? You can't do the same as someone that's got uh, double the budget of you. And the same applies to calories. So we've got to really watch when our budget's low, we've got to watch what we're doing. We've got to pay specific mm -hmm. attention to the foods we eat, the portion sizes we eat, and how they affect maybe our hunger throughout the day. Okay. All right. So where are we diving deep right now with them? Because I want to get into this and tell them some things that they can do. Yeah. So let's come back to point number okay, one. Okay. Point number one. Metabolism. Metabolic adaptation. Yeah. What does that mean? And what does that mean to them? Sure. So for you, that basically mm -hmm. means that you, might, you may be burning less calories than you actually think. And when this occurs, it's going to give you a harder time losing weight or maintaining mm -hmm. weight, right? So then we need to counter these issues. So say normally you might burn 2,000 calories a day, mm -hmm. but actually now you're only burning 1,500. That's a 25% reduction, which is very significant, right? 500 yes. calories out of your, your budget or your calorie balance is key. So we either have two choices. We either have to eat less for the rest of our life, which kind of sucks, or we've got to... Uh, we don't like that plan. No, we've got to change our diet, change our training, supplement regime, and try and alter our hormones so we can actually 
bring that uh, mm. metabolism back up and bring that budget back up so we have more flexibility in life, we enjoy our food more, we have more freedom when on vacation, etc. Okay. And we can do that with some advanced training techniques, supplement techniques, nutrition techniques. So what are some little things that people can do right now that think that might be going on? Yeah. So if you're having a hard time, one of my biggest recommendations, I know you build it into some of your plans mm -hmm. as well, is advanced techniques such as HIIT training. Okay. Um, do, so some people may not know what HIIT training is, so yep. it's high intensity interval training, but exactly. maybe explain in your words rather yeah, than mine. So like HIIT training is like the next big thing in fitness, got tons of positive research, and these studies have shown that just 10 or 15 minutes of HIIT training, which is basically a, a sharp, high intense interval, mm -hmm followed by a rest period and then repeated several times. So just 10 to 15 minutes of that is just as beneficial, if not more mm -hmm. beneficial than like a 60 or 90 minute regular training session. Now I know you guys watching and before you say, but I don't, I can't sprint or I can't mm -hmm. do this crazy stuff. When I'm pretty confident yeah. that when you talk about intensity, it's the same way I talk about intensity. It's what's intense for you. It's relative, 100%. Yeah, so like what's intense for me or him yeah. or somebody else, it might be very different. Yep. Intensity varies. It's whatever's intense for you, and that may be just walking at a fast yeah. pace for yeah. some. It's basically related to your heart rate. So, mm -hmm. for me to exercise at say 80% of my uh, heart rate max could be way different to someone else. So it doesn't yeah. really matter what you you know. Don't compare yourself. Just do it um, based on your fitness really and what level you're at. And to mm -hmm. emphasize this, there's a cool study actually. They actually tested hit training in patients with who had had heart attacks. So you'd think, wow, we don't want to do yeah, that. Everyone's going to die. But they did high intensity interval training, but they weren't like sprinting at 100 miles an hour on a bike. Mm -hmm. They were just doing like fast hill walks, but to them that was very high intense. Yeah, so just, I would say even if you go for, a, a, especially beginners, you go for a walk mm -hmm. and you have those hills and you just start like, okay, when I go up yeah. this hill, I'm going to chug yeah, it and I'm then I'm going to slow down. Yeah. That is your start at hit. Now, it, if yeah. you're an Olympic athlete and you're watching, that yeah. your hit might be a little different. Yeah, hard. exactly. Yeah, so tailor it to you and by changing that intensity, so high to mm -hmm. low, high to low, you're going to see much bigger results and your metabolism is going to be boosted for up to 48 hours after you train. Whoa. So that's really going to help. That's huge because when you do something like, which everyone knows I hate the elliptical, when yeah. you do a slow, like you're reading, you're talking on your cell phone on the, the elliptical yeah. trainer or whatever it is that you're doing, you're, you're really just making yourself hungrier and you're not really doing anything for your metabolism. No, nope. they showed that after two hours, after steady mm -hmm. state stuff like that, your metabolism is actually back to baseline, whereas HIIT training, it's 48 hours peak. So Huge. for 46 more hours after you've done that session, you're going to be burning more mm -hmm. fat, more calories, and even improving your carbohydrate tolerance. Which is huge. Okay, so that was one yeah. metabolic adaptation. If you're jumping on late, make sure you go back and watch the beginning of this because I want, I want you to hear all of this. The second one was the H word, hormones. Okay, let's talk about hormones. Yeah, so again... A lot of hormones will kind of change as you age, and this can cause issues in, like I said, how you metabolize your food, how many calories you burn, how you recover from exercise, mm -hmm. and then other factors such as bone density, for example. Um, and again, one practical thing going away from this is if you do have, if you're optimizing everything, having lots of issues, then actually going for blood work can help because they can see if there's a deficiency or a discrepancy, and they can prescribe safe and natural supplements, for mm -hmm. example. Um, and obviously, if needed, if they do need it, they can um, prescribe you kind of prescription or routines mm -hmm. that can help with your hormones to get what them back in hormone, line. Which hormones specifically do they want to be tested for? And what hormones are typically the problem? Ones? Sure. So again, there's, there's several, and I'll, I'll put, put this in mm -hmm. the PDF so you can take it to the doctors or to the lab, for example. Um, but testosterone and estrogen, so again, females are, kind of ignore testosterone, okay. but it's actually very important. It's so <laughs> yeah, so. If it gets out of the range, then testosterone can affect your strength, your metabolism, and how you partition and your, fat. And your sex drive. Yeah, yeah. so it's very it's integrated. True. Yeah, Testosterone, estrogen, you want to test thyroid hormones, so your mm -hmm. thyroid and you'll ask for a T3 test at the doctors, okay. and that, that basically is closely connected to your metabolism. So if you're thyroid's low, you're going to burn less calories per day. So getting your hormones tested, seeing are you low someplace, yeah. higher in others, and then figuring out a game plan for regulating those, that's, yeah. that's one of them. And, and you can do that naturally a lot of the time, too. Yeah. With for, for, like, there's lots of foods that are estrogen producing, yeah. things like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. But I, I recommend, and I would imagine you do too, that don't just guess at it. Like, go If you think it's your hormones, get tested before you're just going and adding stuff 100% because you'll waste a lot of money time and energy and 
you know, I'm a researcher, so we're all about testing and then making uh, informed decisions rather than guesswork. Yeah. Yeah. All right, number three was calorie bank balance. What yeah. does that mean? So again, it, it's basically how many calories you burn per day and then how that changes if you say need to gain or lose weight. So you have a specific calorie balance that you've got to touch per day. If you want to lose weight, you might need to reduce that by say 300 or 500 or whatever okay. that figure may be. And basically, it's budgeting you per day. And if that bank balance is low, or if that monthly um, or weekly or daily bank balance is low, you're going to have a harder time achieving your results, eating what you like, uh, and ultimately creating a sustainable plan, which I find a lot of people have trouble with. And the reason, one of the reasons they have trouble with this is their bank balance is low all the time. And if you're on a budget, you're going to go over it more often. And when you go over it, you store body fat. So mm. by understanding that our calories just work like at finance, that they're, they're budgeted each day, you've got to make smart decisions. And also, just like with business, increase the revenue or increase the calorie burn per mm -hmm. day to give us a bigger budget. And when we kind of master that and understand that concept, you can use the advanced techniques like the HIIT training okay. um, and other supplements and nutritional uh, interventions to actually mm. improve this bank balance. Okay. Oh, I love it. Are we getting any questions? Brooks behind the camera. He's laughing though. What's going Lots on over of there? Good questions, but okay. I think we answered them. Let's address Heather because she's out because she thinks you're too young to listen. to. Ah, oh, <laughs> see, I not. You know what's funny, you guys? She's I was the gonna... only one. Everyone else is loving it, but she's okay, really Heather. Funny. Let me tell you, Heather. I'm 45, so I'm talking to Heather specifically right now. I'm 45 years old, and when I started my research down the path of what the heck was going on with me, the perimenopause stuff. I talked to a number of people, and I'm still talking to a number of people, but when I met Rudy, I said, dude, you're like my son. You could be my son. You're like, when he told me how old he was, I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. And he said, okay, I, I hear you with that, but what he did was he shoved all of his research in front of me and his clients, and I started reading and watching him, and I was honestly fully impressed. So I started applying a lot of what he was talking to me about, and I said, you know what? In fact, he's here with me and Brooks the last uh, couple of days because yeah. I couldn't get enough of what he's teaching me. So I thought I'd, I'd share with you guys. That's all, but don't you don't have to believe yeah. him. You don't. I'm just, I, I get it. Yeah. I, I'm I'm fielding him for you here, but yeah. I, I hear you because I could have birthed him for real. <laughs> but he's he is a researcher and he yeah. knows what he's talking about. Yeah, I mean you can Google it, and I've you know got a master's degree and worked with hundreds of clients yes. and. You know, experience is important. I've got close to a decade, but there's very few people that have a master's yes. degree, worked as a researcher, and worked with hundreds so of clients. So, don't judge a book by its cover. Because yeah. I did, but I was wrong. So, that's, yeah. where, that's where we go with that. Anyways, I was going to start with his age, just so you know, but Brooke said, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I should have. See? No, you shouldn't lead with an injection. It's one person out of all. All right. Well, okay, but he's got good information, you guys. And seriously, I've been interviewing a lot of people on this stuff. So, I thought his stuff was worth sharing with you. All right, what other questions do we have, Brooks? Somebody just said, Desiree, my doctor just recommended I go on a 500-calorie reset for two days a week. Kay. I can't wrap my brain around that. Yeah, I can't either, Heather. I can't. Or who said that, Desiree? Desiree, I can't wrap my head around that either, but I'm not the doctor, so I don't, I'd don't. i ask what that's based on. Yeah. Now, I will say there is some, there is some validity to some short-term fasting and to some calorie manipulating, but I don't know the details of why he suggested that, so I would guess that's a conversation with your doctor. Yeah, I mean, there's been a couple of studies where they do do that, and mm -hmm. um, it's definitely not like going to reset your metabolism mm -hmm. or anything. Ultimately, all it's doing is creating a big calorie deficit for two days, so you're going to lose fat within those two days, but... You're also going to lose a lot of water. Right? Yeah, you're going to mm -hmm. lose water, you're going to lose like glycogen and just digestive bulk, as we call it, because mm -hmm. you're not really eating much in those two days, but... There's definitely no like superior advantage to that rather than just performing a regular sure. and sustainable diet that you can keep with. But I also think two days is not going to really harm you doing anything no. that much either. So it's kind of, it's one of those like, yeah, take it or leave it. If it fits with you and you enjoy it, then sure. If you told me to do it for a month, I'd have a bigger issue. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. What, what else? People have been loving it. People awesome. Loving See, he's good. Science. See, like, you're on, you can be my son, but you still yeah. have good information. A lot of people said it doesn't matter his age. Yeah. I mean, See? Like, again, there's... People are loving this when there's over 600 people online. Amazing. Right yeah. I'm glad. You guys, I have been fascinating, fa fascinating. I've been fascinated <laughs> with Rudy's information. In fact, I've lost my voice. Can you hear this? Because I'm asking him so many questions. I can't stop talking to him. Yeah. So he's got some good information. So I think you might see a little more of him or you're going to at least start seeing some more of his research through me because I'm loving what he's 
teaching me and what um, I've learned from him. So that's what I wanted to share. That's all. Yeah. But um, any, any, oh, you, we didn't touch oh. on the, I want to talk about cortisol a little bit and sleep. Sure. Can we yeah. talk? Okay. Yeah. So just linking back to all our hormones. So basically when, for example, with sleep, when we sleep at night, a lot of our hormones are produced and changed. So the biggest one to consider is growth hormone. So when you actually go to sleep, growth hormone um, elevates and peaks around mm. midnight, 1 a.m., and basically, if you have bad sleep or disrupted sleep, that growth hormone peak won't occur. So you'll actually have lower growth hormone. And growth hormone is another key hormone mm. that basically alters your metabolism. So if you eat carbohydrates and fat, high growth hormone will help you partition them, burn them off as fuel. If you have low growth hormone, you'll store more as body fat. So that's another key hormone. Sleep, poor sleep has also been shown to increase cortisol and increase cravings and just make you more sus uh, susceptible nice. for body, body okay. fat store. Cool. So yeah, and cortisol is pretty much the mm -hmm. same. If cortisol is always elevated. Cortisol is a stress hormone, you guys. Yeah, so if you're always stressed, freaking out. Hello, cortisol hi, is that's me. I, I do get stressed a lot and I freak out a lot. Yeah. If you guys, if anything happens, and if you ever like hear that I had a heart attack in like <laughs> M MIA, <laughs> It's probably because my cortisol levels yeah. are... I have a problem with that, for sure. So, and you can fix that as well. So How do I fix it? Which one's now? So ashwagandha supplement is a natural herb that's been shown to help you relax and lower cortisol. That's a really good one if you're always stressed all the time. Yes. Uh, meditation and other techniques at night have been shown mm -hmm. to help lower that magnesium? cortisol. magnesium? Yeah, magnesium before bed. It's another... Like we were saying mm -hmm. earlier, it's mm -hmm. one of my top on the list. So there's a couple of supplements there. Obviously, lifestyle is a big part. You can, you know, in the modern day world, never really cook out stress, but we can mm -hmm. do our best to cope with stress and manage with stress. And that's what I, I heard. I was just listening. I don't even know where I heard this uh -huh. recently, but that like years ago, obviously, our bodies, that stress hormone was there for a reason, like yeah, a lion's chasing flight. you, yeah, basically. Yeah. So once in a blue moon, a lion might chase yeah. you and it acts up. But now we like activate that stress yeah. stuff like 10 times a day. Yeah. And they've linked cortisol elevations to like heart disease, obesity, yes. diabetes, because it... Your hormones affect Belly everything fat, you do. Yeah, too. everything you do. So, yeah, cortisol in like a short spurt would save us from a lion. Mm -hmm. It would increase adrenaline, help us run faster. But we Whereas don't have now, any lions chasing us. No, now that the problem I know. is it's up all day, every day, and those like chronic elevations cause health issues. Yeah. yeah. You guys, I don't know. I hope you guys like this. Thank you so much, no, Rudy, for pleasure. sharing this. You guys are going to see a little more of him because I like his yeah. information, yeah. and I'm going to share a, with you. It's a lot to take in. So with all my stuff, I try and condense it. So I'll... I'll type up these notes into a PDF for That's everyone. Awesome. We can upload it, and then Ooh. you know you can take those blood tests to your doctors. You can read more about HIT training and everything like that. Somebody was asking about mm -hmm. the cost of blood tests and hormone tests. Is that stuff really expensive? Or? You you can find good lab tests like so in the USA, anylabtests.com, um, for example. There's lots of different companies. If you do it privately. You might pay $200 for a full metabolic panel, which seems expensive, but if you get it done, you're going to know exactly what you need to do with your lifestyle mm -hmm. and your diet and your training. And if you think about how many hours you spend training, how much you spend on your diet, your supplement regime, that cost can quickly add yeah. up. So being able to pinpoint and be more accurate with all that is definitely worth the investment long term. Amazing. Uh, and uh, Rudy, will you make sure, can you look back at comments later in case the, anyone has any specific questions? Yeah, I'll Just, jump back on and help. Okay. And, and yeah. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. So he's not going anywhere. And um, thanks, you guys, for chiming in. If you have any questions, we mixed, uh, mi mix, miss, add them in. And then something I've been doing lately, so if you're part of my NJ Fit Squad, I do a little after party. It's like the downtime after yeah. <laughs> we debrief. So we go a little bit deeper on NJ Fit Squad after uh, these interviews. So I will see you in my squad um, if you want to see more uh, with Rudy and me tonight. And if yep. you don't know what the squad is yet, then you're just not cool. No, I'm kidding. If you don't know what the squad is yet, you can find out more at NJFit. Um, what? I'm losing my mind. NJFitSquad.com. So you can find us over there. Cool. Thanks, you guys. Oh, I'm gonna, what's your website, Rudy? Yeah, oh. so just uh, you can follow the page. It's just rudymore.com. Um, and you can go to the page and get more information on the blogs and topics I've discussed today. All right. Yeah. See you guys. Bye. Bye.